Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering maternity, and to be more to be more specific, I'm going to be going over amniocentesis. Before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you guys to please support me and support this channel by pressing that like button and go ahead and subscribing to this channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So let's get started. Amniocentesis, let me make this a little bit larger for you. Look at what it says. Amniocentesis is performed to obtain amniotic fluid, which contains fetal cells. Under direct ultrasonographic visualization, a needle is inserted transabdominally into the uterus, and the amnio, uh, excuse me, the amniotic fluid is withdrawn into a syringe. And what they're going to do, guys, is actually test that amniotic fluid. Then the various assessments are performed on the amniotic sample. That's the test those tests that they're going to be running on the fluid. Am amniocentesis is possible. This is important for you guys to know. Look at what it says. Amniocentesis is possible after week 14 of pregnancy when the uterus becomes an abdominal organ and sufficient amniotic fluid is available for testing. So guess what? Before 14 weeks, there's not enough amniotic fluid to be able to draw to uh, actual get a good sample. So that is very important for you guys to know that amniocentesis is possible after how many weeks? 14 weeks of pregnancy. Indications for the procedure include, Professor D, do I have to know the indications? I'm sorry, don't shoot the messenger. Yes, you do. What are those indications for amniocentesis? Take a look. Prenatal diagnosis of genetic disorders or congenital anomalies. And guys, when you're studying and in parentheses, they give you examples, those same examples, they give you in parentheses, you get a test question on it. Most of the time, that's the answer. Make sure you know it. So what kind of congenital anomalies um, are we looking for? Are we testing for when we're doing the amniocentesis? Neural tube defects. What else? Assessment of pulmonary maturity. Why? Because um, in order for that fetus to survive outside of the womb, they have to have enough, what? Surfactant. So we're testing that fluid for the presence of that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. What else will we test for? We could test for diagnosis of fetal hemolytic disease. So we're testing for genetic um, anomalies such as nerve tube defects. We can test for genetic disorders. We can chest, check for uh, pulmonary sufficiency. We're checking to make sure they have enough surfactant. And we can also be checking for fetal hemolytic disease. What are some complications? Bad things that can happen with the um, amniocentesis. Com Oops, I forgot to put my phone on. You missed that, guys. I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. Okay. Excuse me. Um, look at this. Complications in the mother and fetus occur only rarely and include the following. So even though it's rare, you do have to be aware of what can happen. For mom, leakage of amniotic fluid, hemorrhage. Fetal maternal hemorrhage <clears throat> with possible maternal RH isoimmunization. Now, this uh, RH isoimmunization, I made another video about that. Make sure you guys go watch that if you haven't. Infection. Mom can actually go into labor. Placental abruption. Inadvertent damage to the intestines or the bladder. Amniotic fluid embolism. What can happen to the fetus? Death. Hemorrhage infection, which is known as amnionitis, that's infection of the actual um, um, amniotic fluid. Because remember guys, this is an invasive procedure and anything that's invasive, there is a chance of us introducing bacteria to that environment. What else can happen to the fetus? Direct injury from the needle. Here's a safety alert. Because of the possibility of fetal maternal hemorrhage administering this RHD immunoglobin, that's Rogam. That's what they're talking about. Administering Rogam to the woman who is RH negative is standard practice after amniocentesis. Make sure you guys go back and watch my video on this. But basically, in a nutshell, is every time mom is RH negative, every time she's RH negative, we're not going to take that chance. She's going to get that Rogam. OK, we are not going to take that chance because what we don't want to happen is incompatibility, because then we have another set of issues. 
So make sure you know that. Look at indications for use, genetic concerns. Being an older mom, 35 years of age or older, that increases the risk of having a child with a uh, genetic disorder. The dad being older. Older paternal age, there's no consensus, but usually considered to be around 40 or 50 for the dad. What are other risk factors for having a child with a congenital disorder? Take a look at this. Parents who are affected by or being carriers of genetic disorders, such as, um, uh, what's that disorder? Sickle cell. Mom carrying the trait. Dad carrying the trait, guess what? They have a one out of four chance of having a child that has the disorder, right? Dual sickle cell anemia, Tay-Sachs disease, cystic fibrosis, other risk factors. Women with prior child who had a structural birth defect. Women with a prior child with a chromosomal anomaly. So all of these are risk factors of having a, a child with a genetic disorder. Let's move on to fetal lung maturity. Remember, guys, I talked to you guys about surfactant, and that's what um, the fetus needs to be able to live outside of the womb because that is what allows the alveoli, which is where gas exchange takes place, that's what allows the alveoli to not collapse. So take a look at what it says. LBC. LBC stands for lamellar bar body count. Okay, the ink, the more LBC that you have, the more surfactant that you have, the more surfactant that you have, the more mature the lungs are, the more mature the lungs are, the higher chance the fetus has of living outside of the womb. Okay, so LBC has become the primary test for determining fetal lung maturity. LBC, remember that's your, what's my C stand for count? Your uh, lamellar body count. These are surfactant containing particles secreted by type two pneumocytes. The number of lame lamellar bodies found in the amniotic fluid increases with onset of functional fetal pulmonary maturity. So this directly gives us an idea of how, how likely that fetus would be to survive outside of the womb. All right, guys, this was a short video, but to the point. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. The next video I'm going to make for you is going to be the chorionic villa sampling. So do watch out for that. But let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover more of or more extensively. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Also, if you guys would like to practice nursing questions on a daily basis, go and check out my TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook, where almost daily I go over different types of questions and I explain the rationale for the answer. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and you guys will catch me on the next video.